Hello everyone, and welcome to the HTML Level 1 section of the course. It's time to start learning about HTML. This section of the course is going to start off just by covering the very basics of HTML. And HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's one of the most basic building blocks of the web, and every website will need it in some form or another. It's our first fundamental step in understanding how to actually build a web application. Later on in future sections of the course, we're going to be learning about other technologies, such as CSS to style the HTML and JavaScript to add a functionality. Then in future sections, such as the Python and Django sections of the course, we're going to learn how to add Django template tags, connect it with Python and HTML to dynamically generate content based off a user's interaction with the website. However, all of that is still quite a bit away, and we need to start off with the very basic fundamentals of HTML, and that's level one. In level one, we're gonna be discussing the following topics. HTML basics, tagging with HTML, how to create lists in HTML, what divs and spans are, and then attributes in HTML. Okay, one quick final note. Remember, as you code along with the course, you can always reference the corresponding lecture notes to check your code. Let's get started. I'll see you in the next lecture where we cover HTML basics. Hello everyone and welcome back to the part one HTML basics lecture. Let's start off by exploring the very basics of what an HTML file looks like and how we can open it in a browser. Plus we'll learn about some Atom text editor convenience features to quickly create HTML files. I'm going to jump to the Atom text editor now. All right, here I am at the Atom text editor. As a quick note, you can either just code along and create new files in the project folders that are provided for you as a download to the course, or you can add your new project folders or new files as you go along. It's really up to you. You can always just right click and click a new file, new folder, or just add a whole new project folder so you can see a new folder over here. It's really up to you. I've already created a project folder. I've called it HTML underscore level underscore one. And another quick note, try to avoid using just spaces in your folder names and in your file names. You should always try to replace them with something like an underscore to make sure that you can read the whole file path with your computer. Sometimes spaces will mess a computer up in reading the actual file path. So just a quick note on that. Okay, let's start off by creating a new file and we will call it basic.com html and we can do uppercase or lowercase here i'll just keep it simple with lowercase because that's usually what you, they look like all right so here's basics.html and one thing i want to show you is i can begin to type html and you'll notice that adam text editor has this little pop-up that says html if i hit enter when i see that pop-up i will get the basically boilerplate code as it's called or the skeleton code of an html file now let's walk through this and explain what's actually going on. In this very first line, we see something that says doc type HTML. And that's something you're gonna find in pretty much all HTML files. And that basically just tells the browser, hey, you're looking at an HTML file. And then we have the HTML tags. You'll notice we have an opening tag here at the line number two and a closing tag over at line number 10. And the difference between an opening and a closing tag is it just lets you know when it starts and when it stops. And the closing, we'll notice, has a little forward slash in it. And what's nice about Adam Text Editor is you'll see these little arrows pop up, which just allow you to collapse or open things between their opening and closing tags. So that's just for organization. Then we have two major sections, the head of the HTML file and the body of the HTML file. Let's start off by just explaining what the head is. The head of the HTML, which is this first section, is going to contain the metadata. And for this first section of the course, the HTML level one, we won't be doing a whole lot with the actual head of the HTML. That will come into play a lot more when we actually use CSS and JavaScript. But it's going to mainly serve as how to link your HTML document to other types of files, such as your CSS file or your .js JavaScript file. But another tag that we notice that's an HTML head is this title tag. And that's basically what's going to show up as the title when you open this up in a browser. And the title is just what's shown in the tab. So I'm going to type in, in between this uh, title tag, something like this is the title, exclamation mark. And notice I don't need any quotes here, it's just pure text in between these tags and HTML will recognize it. And then this other meta 
uh, data is just telling you what character set uh, you would expect. And that's UTF-8 encoding. Don't worry about that too much right now. Then finally we have the body. And the body is going to contain the actual content. We're going to be discussing actual content such as paragraphs and lists, etc. throughout this section of the course. Right now we'll leave the body blank. The last thing I want to show you before we actually view this HTML file in our browser is how to comment code. So in HTML, comments look like this. You do a opening tag, exclamation mark, dash, dash, and that says that's the start of the comment. And then the end of the comment is dash, dash, uh, that other closing sign. And then anything here is a comment. The other quick way to do this is if you have some text or a line of code, you can just do control or command, depending on your OS, a forward slash, and Atom and Sublime Text Editor will actually just auto uh, comment everything there. Or if you wanted to, you could actually highlight uh, many lines and then do control forward slash to comment or control forward slash to uncomment. All right, so anything in between those two types of tags is a comment and it's just control or command forward slash to quickly make a line or multiple lines in actual comment. I'm going to do control S here to save this and let's open this up in our browser. So the way we open this up in our browser is by just passing in the entire file path into the browser. For now, we're going to be just running things locally, so that's how it will work. I'm going to right click on my HTML file and then say copy full path. So I will copy the full path to that and then let me bring in a browser window. And here is a browser window and what I can do is right where my URL browser usually goes, I'm going to just copy and paste that file path. So this is just the whole file path to that actual HTML file. I hit enter and I notice something that's just basically a blank page. And that makes sense, we haven't provided any content or HTML content in the body of our HTML file. But what we do notice is this, our little this is the title in the title actually showed up, perfect. So that's really all there is for the very basics of an HTML file. What an HTML file mostly will be as we work with it are the actual body tags. So let's go ahead and continue on by editing this file with body tags in part two in the next lecture. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you there. Hello everyone and welcome back to part two, the basic tagging lecture. In this lecture, we're going to go over some basic heading and paragraph tags. And tags are basically a way to allow you to insert elements into an HTML file. And we're also going to be showing you a few resources to use as a reference as you continue learning about HTML. Let's go ahead and get started by opening our Atom Text Editor and a browser. I'll see you there. All right, here I have a split screen between the Atom Text Editor and my browser. And this is actually a view we're going to be using a lot in the course because we'd like to see changes and not have to jump back and forth between the browser and the text editor. So a lot of times you'll see me just have a split screen like this so I can just refresh the page in the browser when I'm actually doing edits in the Atom text editor. But before we get started on continuing working with this basics.html file from the last lecture, what I want to discuss are two resources online that you're going to be running into a lot as you do some Google searches for terms in case you ever need to reference some sort of resource. And those two resources are something called w3schools.com and the other one is the developer.mozilla.org website. And here I've just searched for HTML element tags on Google. You'll notice that the very first hit is this w3schools.com and usually when you ask Google for some basic question on HTML or CSS, a lot of times the very first link that pops up is a w3schools.com. And w3schools.com is basically just a very large reference site for uh, front-end web development like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And you'll notice that as you go through the website, it'll basically just give you a bunch of resources and references for a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about in this course. So if you ever Google stuff and you find yourself on this website, uh, feel free to check it out. Now, it's an okay website, uh, mainly the main reason you see it as the top hit is just because it's been around so long, but I would actually suggest that when you're Google searching and you come up with a reference to this developer.mozilla.org site, you actually choose this site instead. 
it's a little better, it has more detail, and it's really uh, geared towards developers. So if you click on this developer.mozilla.org link, it has an HTML element reference, and this is basically a reference to all the HTML elements. And HTML elements are just going to allow us to actually insert material into our HTML text file. And you see here that it's a little more technical and it's a little more geared towards developers, while the w3schools.com website is geared more towards basic beginners. And as you advance through this course, you're probably going to find this developer.mozilla.org site uh, more useful to you. So I just want to let you know that these are two resources you're going to be coming through uh, in contact with a lot as you do some Google searching on your own. Okay, now that we've covered that, let's jump back to this browser tab where I have the basics.html file that we've been working with uh, last time opened up here. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up here. And to get a little more room on my screen, I'm actually going to close or collapse this left tab here. And I can do that just by doing either control backslash or command backslash on your keyboard. And that just opens and collapses uh, that little side tab. So a really useful shortcut for the Atom text editor. Now the first tag we're going to be learning about are the header tags or a heading tag. And let's show you how to do that. To start off, we'll do a heading one tag or a header one tag. And basically we just have h1 open and then h1 closed. And then anything in between this, any text, is going to be a header. So this say this is a we'll, we'll call them heading one. And then I'm going to save this. So just either control or command S, make sure that's saved, and I'm going to refresh this. And we see now on our web page, we see this is a heading one. And basically a heading produces a larger font that is bold. And we're going to learn a lot more about how to actually dictate text styles, such as font size, whether something is bold or italic. Uh, later on in the course. We'll cover a little bit about bold and italics in this lecture, but later on we'll actually talk about more styling for this actual font. For now we can just explore the very basics of HTML and what your browser does by default. If heading 1 is too big for you, well you can actually have heading 2. And you'll notice that Atom Text Editor actually provides us with these autocomplete options. So you can just uh, go down here on your keyboard and then hit enter on one of these and you'll notice we automatically get the opening and closing tag. So you'll find yourself using that a lot as you continue on through this course. And we'll type something like this is a heading two, save that, and then refresh our page here. And we see we get the same heading, so it's in bold, but it's a little smaller. And there's actually a heading three, so we can do that as well. We'll call this heading three, save this, refresh, and we notice we get an even smaller heading, etc. And this actually goes all the way down to heading six, which is going to be the smallest heading possible. So you'll notice that it's actually uh, still in bold, but it's very small. If you just want essentially what is a normal text size, you can use what is known as a paragraph. And that's just a P. So I'm gonna write this is a, whoops, paragraph. 1G, save this and then refresh. And you'll notice that we get this is a paragraph, which is just here in normal text, it's not in bold, and we're ready to go there. But something to note is that each of these lines with the new tags is basically in its own block. And headings are their own block, as well as paragraph. So paragraph tags, tags can actually create separation. And let me show you what I mean by that. If I, over here in my HTML file, try to write on multiple lines. So I say this is a paragraph, this is line two, then this is line three. If I save this and then refresh this, notice that I don't actually get that effect that I was looking for in my HTML file when it gets displayed in my browser. It all goes into one continuous line. If I actually want separate blocks, I need to separate them into actual uh, different tags which means I would need to have each of these separate lines in its own paragraph tag. So I would have to have this be, this is line two, and then this one be line three. So this is line three right here, and paste it in, and then grab this closing tag, and let's stick it back to the original right there. Now let's save this, and if we refresh this, we can see that now they're all in their separate blocks. 
And something to note here is that your HTML file doesn't really care about indentation. What it really cares about are just these tags. That's what's really going to define uh, how lines are built and how blocks are separated. So I can actually put multiple paragraph tags on the same line here. So we'll do this, put them all on line 14, just to show you what I mean. So here I have all those three paragraph tags on the same line, they're all on line 14. If I save this again and refresh, I get the exact same effect. So it's really the tags that are telling HTML what is in the same block, not the actual line number or the indentation. In other programming languages, you'll use uh, brackets, or in Python, you a lot of times use indentation to clarify which blocks goes where. In HTML, it's basically all done by tags. And you notice I can keep uh, writing on separate lines here. So, whoops, let's delete that. Say something like, this is continued. I'm still writing in line two. Save this, and if I refresh this, you notice that since that's all contained in the second paragraph tag, it all goes here. All right, so that's the very basics of what a heading tag is and what a paragraph tag is. Things to note there is that headings can go from one to six, so H1 to H6, and what makes them a little different is their size and the fact that they're in bold. And then we have, for normal text, uh, paragraph tags. And something that'll be really useful is a lot of times you need filler text and what Atom Text Editor and Sublime Text Editor have for you is the lorem ipsum statement, which is basically just a bunch of uh, filler Latin text. And if you start typing lorem, notice you get this little pop-up here. Go ahead and just oops, select that and hit enter. And you'll get a bunch of code or text here, I should say. And it's basically just a bunch of filler text that's uh, really common to use in web development in case you just need some filler text. So if I save this and refresh this page, Notice now I get, whoops, it tells me if I want to translate it, no, because it's in Latin, but you just get a bunch of uh, filler text here in Latin. So this is really common to use as you need filler code for your web development. And you can do it uh, just by typing in lorem and then hitting enter in either Sublime Text Editor or an Atom Text Editor. It works in both. All right, saving that there, let's refresh this. And I remove that. The last thing I want to cover is uh, bold and italics. Now, there was actually an old way of showing bold and italics in HTML, and there's a newer uh, syntax for it. So let me show you the old way first, and then I'll show you the new way. So let me delete these paragraphs and just type in something very simple. We'll say, this is text that is in bold. And then below it, we'll say, this is text that is in italics. Whoops, italics, okay. So if I actually want to make this bold, the old way would be to do it with a B call. So what I would end up doing is wrapping this whole thing or whatever I want it to be bold in B. So it would look like this. So we call our closing tag B here. And if you just type in B, Adam Text Editor will also uh, give you the autocomplete for the bold. I'm going to save this and then refresh and notice here that it says now this is text that is in bold. So this is the old way of doing bold text. And the old way of doing italic text is with an I call or an I tag. So we'll notice here we see I for italic, which means if I wrap this whole thing and open and close I tags and save this and refresh, I get now that this text is in italics here. So we can see that this is text that is in bold and this is text that is in italics. That was the old way of doing things. Uh, there's a newer semantic way because B and I aren't very clear on exactly what they're doing since they're just two letters. And you always wanna be really clear when you're coding, especially if you're gonna come look at this code in the future. So the newer semantic way of doing stuff is if you want text to be bold, the new keyword for that is a strong tag. So this works in basically exactly the same way as the bold tag, except now it just says strong. So that might be a little clearer when you come back to your code that you know that it's going to be in bold. And we see here there's no changes that refresh because that's just a new syntax. And now for italics, the new syntax is em for emphasis or emphasized. So if you wanna add emphasis to text, you would italicize it, 
or with the new tagging uh, syntax, it's EM for emphasis. So save this, uh, refresh, and we see here there's no change because uh, that still works exactly the same way. So again, the old way is with the B and I tags. The newer way, which is the way I would suggest uh, doing it as you go throughout this course, is the strong tag and the EM for emphasis tag. All right, uh, that's really all there is to this lecture. Hopefully you found it uh, pretty straightforward. Again, you may want to play around with uh, different headers, adding more paragraphs, etc. But everything should have been straightforward right now. All we've covered is just a few basic tags, such as heading tags, paragraph tags, and bold and italics. Okay, thanks everyone, and I will see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone, and welcome to part three of HTML level one, where we discuss how to create a list in HTML. A lot of times you want to get your information on your HTML page organized, and one way to do this is with a list. And HTML has two main types of lists. That's an ordered list and an unordered list. And we can actually then add list elements to each of these types. Let's get started by jumping to the Atom Text Editor in our browser. All right, here I am with my Atom Text Editor open, and I have right now just the simple basics.html document we've been working with, and I've deleted everything but left one heading one that says lists on it. Let me first show you how to create an ordered list. Now an ordered list is numbered, so you can see number one, the first item, number two, the second item, etc. So to start off with an ordered list, you just type OL, and then you can click enter here, and Atom Text Editor will automatically create the opening tag and closing tag for you. And then inside of this ordered list, you're gonna have list elements. If I save this and then refresh my page, you notice nothing's actually changed. So I do have an ordered list there, but with no elements in it. To create a list item or a list element, it's just li to be your tag, and then whatever you want in there. So in this case, we'll just say first item. Going to save that and refresh this, and I see now I have my one first item. And let me zoom in here a little bit. I'm just gonna do control plus to zoom in on this HTML so we can see it a little better here. So here's my first item, and as I continue to add list elements, into this ordered list, such as my second item, save this and refresh the page, you can see here that they are numbered. And this will continue on as long as I just keep item, adding items into this actual list. So third item there, refresh, and here we can see the numbering. Now later on with CSS, you can actually change the numbers if you want to use something like Roman numerals, etc. But this is the very basic default of an HTML ordered list. Now, a lot of times you actually don't want to number things, you just want some sort of bullet point. And if you want that, then what you're looking for is an unordered list. And to create an unordered list, you use the tag UL for unordered list. So UL, I'll hit enter there, it creates the opening and closing tags for me. And now as I add list items, we'll say bullet one here, add another item here, we'll say second item, and you can really add whatever text you want here. We'll do li enter here, and then we'll say third item. I'm going to save this and refresh. And now you see I have an unordered list where there is no number, but everything is just a bullet point. And that's the main difference between an ordered list, OL, and an unordered list, UL. And the last thing I wanna cover quickly here is a nested list. So you can actually nest lists inside of each other. And you can nest an ordered list inside of an unordered list or vice versa. Let me show you an example of this. And I'll show you kind of an extreme example of nesting lists. So you usually won't see um, that many lists nested into each other, but I just want to show you this so you can get an idea of what's possible. So here's an ordered list, and I'm going to have two items in it first. Item 1, and then item 2. And I'm just using the autocomplete there with enter to make that a little quicker. So here's item 1, here's item 2, and they're numbered because they're inside an ordered list. And now, I'm going to put an unordered list. Inside of these ordered list tags, I put in that unordered list, which means if I add some new list elements, they'll be inside. So I'm just gonna say something like, I'm nested inside for that list item, and here I'll make another list item that says also nested, exclamation mark. We'll save that, refresh this, and we can see here that with that nesting, we also get an extra indentation. So HTML can show that this is nested inside of this list. So if we wanted to, we could say item one, 
item two, and then we could say these are like sub items of item two that is an unordered list. And we can actually keep going with this. So if you wanted something uh, further nested in, we could put an ordered list in there and then say something like, whoa, I'm really nested, exclamation mark. And let's emphasize this by putting some of this in bold. So remember that we have the strong tag to put something in bold and I'm going to put whoa in there. There we go. Now let's save that, refresh this, and we can see here item one, item two, we have this nested unordered list, and then whoa, I'm really nested there. So that's just a very quick example of nesting lists. We're not gonna do it too often in the course, but I just want you to be aware of the ability to do that. All right, so that's really all there is for lists themselves. It's a pretty basic topic. Remember, you essentially have this OL for ordered list and UL for unordered list. And then inside of either of these, every item in that list is going to have an LI tag for a list element. Okay, thanks everyone, and I will see you at the next lecture.